There's a few reasons why we're looking at diverse crops. Typically, monocultures such as brassica rape might be sown to help fill that feed gap in late summer or possibly maize. But we're talking about dry stock farms and beef and sheep hill country. So we need some options that may or may not involve cultivation and that provide good quality feed that's high nutritive value and also very productive in terms of dry matter production. The reason I was interested in the multi-species project is as a farmer we've seen increasingly dry summers in the Waikato so uh, summers become the time of year when we have the greatest feed punch and also outside of our farming business I do work as a consultant and I've seen across the sector and across the Waikato that, that summer feed pinches have become more of a problem and with costs increasing due to global factors we can't rely on bought in feed for sheep and beef systems so being able to grow something cheap that is of high quality at home um, is something that I was interested in. With, with this experiment we are using as our standard uh, brassica rape but we're looking at a range of other mixtures as well. We're wanting to combine species that complement each other and that good at capturing the sunlight to produce the energy for the plant to grow and be really productive as well as differences in root traits that will maximise the use of the nutrients and the water in the soil. So the range of mixtures that we're looking at range from one right up to 21 species but as well with the subset of the mixtures we're being really focused and targeted and narrowing right down just to four species and looking for species that we know grow well and are adapted to this kind of environment. So the ones we focused on were combinations of rape, red clover, oats and plantain. For the most part grazed it fairly normally, it took a, a little while to adjust to, to eating a brassica as you'd expect but we had no observable animal health issues and animal performance was about consistent with what would have happened if they were grazing on high quality feeds given the stocking rates that we were we were working with so I guess it was a good outcome because we had a really dry summer I think and now in the data there we we had a heap of rain when we were establishing the crop and then the tap turned off uh, just before Christmas and never really turned back on until until February so it provided some some feed that was a lot better than what the alternative would have been for them which would have been um, basically wheat bix so um, yeah it was, it was good in that regard. The research has shown us that there are alternatives to rape monoculture to provide high quality forage in the middle of summer to help fill the feed deficit. If you're looking to do a multi-species work to be taking a longer term view to it, um, you need to upfront some of your chemistry. You've got less chemical options once the crop's in the ground because of the diversity, so you need to be aware of that six months in advance of the crop. There are a couple of areas where I established the crop where I followed sort of conventional farming approach where I had a paddock with some problems, I put a crop in it, normally I'd use chemistry to clean that paddock up with the crop in situ, that's not really an option with a, with a multi-species crop. But probably what I've learned is that you can look at a, a pasture cropping program over multi-years, so you could have a brassica crop which could have an understory of chicory or plantain which then could persist into another, another couple of years and an Italian ryegrass or a, or a hybrid ryegrass could be used which may um, be an alternative to sort of some of the challenges we have around pasture persistence for perennial ryegrasses. We suggest if you are focused on a high quality crop for a short period of time that's high yielding that a simple mixture can provide you with a viable alternative.